Hey guys, this episode we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. I've got my Raspberry Pi here wired up to this little blue box. And this blue box is a air quality sensor called the PMS 5003. And we are gonna be using that to actually uh, monitor air quality usage in my brand new office and in my house. Um, everything is finished, but we have lots of drywall dust and the ducts and things like that. Um, so I just wanted to run an air quality sensor to see what things were like. And we're gonna be using Ruby to actually um, listen to those readouts from this board. So I'll show you in a picture here how to wire this up. Effectively, we're gonna take the power and ground from the pins on the Raspberry Pi, run them over to the sensor, and then the sensor's transmit um, pin over the serial interface we're going to send it to the Raspberry Pi and receive from that. So it's pretty straightforward, very simple to set up, but we're going to then dig into the Raspberry Pi and write code to use the UART serial interface to actually listen to that um, device for reading. So this is gonna be super fun. Um, so there's a bunch of places you can find this online um, and thankfully Tenderlove has written the UART library for Ruby and it even has an example code in there to get you set up. Um, but we're gonna SSH into our Raspberry Pi and we're gonna write some code in order to um, work with this. So we're gonna say airquality.rb and we're going to require bundler setup because we're just writing a regular Ruby script here. We're gonna require that UART library and we're going to require io slash wait. And we're gonna write this file and we're gonna have a gem file that we need to add the UART library to. So we can run bundle init to create the gem file for us. And then if we open our gem file, um, we'll see that it adds the source for us and we can add our own gems here. We're gonna add gem UART, and this is going to be version 1.0, um, and we'll just run bundle to install that. And then we can dig into our code for this. So the airquality.rb file is where we wanna work. Bundler setup is going to require the gem files. Gems, that will give us access to UART. I await comes with Ruby and we can start writing our little um, interface. So what I'm gonna do is create a PMS 5003 class where we can initialize this and we can tell it what interface we want to work with and give it some defaults. And when you're on the Raspberry Pi, um, it's gonna create this TTYS0 or possibly another dev interface for you to listen to. And that is going to be basically the file we will read from in order to uh, read from the sensor. So Linux sets up this thing that allows us to talk to it just like we're reading a regular file, which is kind of cool. Um, it's a little bit more complicated for, uh, from that, I'm sure, behind the scenes, but for our purposes, we don't have to do too much. So um, we need to set the baud rate to 9600 and mode to 8N1, and I forget there's a, inside the UART library, there's an explanation of what 8N1 does, but that's just what we need to say. set. We'll set interface equal to interface at baud rate equal to baud rate and mode to mode. And that will be our initialize method. And we can add adder readers here for interface and baud rate and mode as well. And then we can define a start method which is uart, uart.open, that interface, the baud rate, and the mode, and then we can loop infinitely listening for new events to come through on here. So we wanna say uart.wait readable, which is basically going to wait until it can read something here, then we'll have start one, start two, which is going to read two bytes, from the interface. And then we just need to check unless start one equals OX42 and start two equals OX4D. Um, these are basically what the data sheet of the device says that the packets start with those two bytes um, and we just need to listen for them uh, to create a new packet. Then we can say uart.read 
and then call next. So it's gonna basically grab all that information for us um, when there is a new uh, packet. So then we can say length equals uart.read to unpack n dot first. Um, then we can grab that amount of data. So this is going to give us the amount of data it's gonna send us. And we can read that specific amount of data off the interface. And then it gives us a CRC as well. So we can say OX42 plus OX4D plus 28 plus data bytes first 26 inject plus. So we'll add those all together to calculate the CRC. And data is going to be data unpack and 14. So these are all kind of things that are a bit more technical about reading the serial interface. This is actually stuff from Tenderlove's example. I'm not fully familiar with all of the details here, but you can read the data sheet for the PMS 5003 and uh, learn a little bit about the uh, you know CRC calculations, and you'll be able to figure out whether or not um, you understand all of the stuff that's going on here. So we basically want to skip any of these where the CRC is not valid, um, data.last. If you aren't familiar, a CRC is a, um, a oh, calculation. So a CRC is basically this uh, checksum, uh, I forget what it stands, cyclic redundancy check. Uh, that's what it stands for. And basically that's a checksum just to make sure that the values you read were valid. Um, and there was not anything corrupted in there. So we'll just skip anything that is corrupted. So then once we have that, we have a new sample that we can create and we're gonna say time.now.utc and then we will take data.first12 and pass those values in. Um, and then we can log out that sample. And so we're gonna need a class for this sample. And this is going to just be a simple struct. It has a time, and it has a handful of other values. So we have the PM10 standard, we have the PM25, and this is basically the different particle sizes here. Two, five standard, and we have the PM10 standard, and these are like the tiniest particles, the small particles, and the larger particles. We have the PM10, Env, and this is, I believe, kind of like an outdoor um, calculation of these if you happen to have the sensor outside instead of inside. Um, concentration unit, and then particle O3 UM, particle O5 UM, particle 10 UM, particle 25 um particle 50 um and particle 100 um so those are all the values that we get from this and what's kind of cool is we can go through this and say like for pm25 um there's a certain values that are safe and you can look up like a pm2.5 chart um, and you'll see like these air quality index charts. And I believe that when we are looking at this, so the air quality index, which you might see like on your iPhone, um, it will tell you the air quality today is maybe moderate or something like that. It's reading this air quality index, but our sensor is giving us the PM 2.5 reading in micrograms per meter cubed. And so when we see zero to 12 um, PM 2.5, it's good which is the equivalent of zero to 50 on the air quality index. Um, and there's also the NAQI, which is for certain countries. I think AQI is in the US, NAQI is um, somewhere else. I forget where exactly, I was reading about that last week. Um, but we're looking at these values here for 2.5 micrograms per meter cubed. And so if we want to implement this, we can say case PM25, standard when it's zero to 12, here I'll scroll up for us, then we can say it's good when it's 
uh, say 13 to 35, then it is moderate. When it is uh, 36 to 55, then it is unhealthy for sensitive individuals. When it is 56 to 150, um, then we can do uh, unhealthy. When it is 150 to 250, then it is very unhealthy. And otherwise, it is hazardous. So if we define you know, these descriptions in here, we can basically log that out and print that out in the terminal and see the values of the micrograms per meter cubed and the status of that, whatever it means. Um, so healthy, unhealthy, blah, blah, blah. And we can print those out. So if we add like a little log method here that takes a sample, we can have that sample print out sample.time. We'll print out PM 2.5 reading is sample PM 2.5 standard. And this is micrograms per meter cubed and the sample PM 2.5 interpretation, uh, you know, the air quality index reading like good, moderate, healthy. Um, we can print those out and we can put that. So this should do everything we need to actually read from the, um, the interface. But here at the bottom, we're going to want to create a new instance of this, PMS5003.new, and we can say PMS.start to actually run that. Now, um, if we go into the Raspberry Pi config, um, you'll want to run this as root. You can go into interface options, oops, and go into serial port. And then you want to say no for the login shell and yes to have the serial port hardware enabled. Um, and then you will need to restart your Raspberry Pi. And then you can, you should be able to, uh, as root, um, read from, we'll jump in as root, cat slash dev ttys0, the serial port. And you will see that we are getting some data from that that are printed out. And I have, um, we'll grep for, TTYS0 inside that directory. Um, I have added myself to the group so that as the regular Pi user, we don't have to run this as the root user. Um, we're in the group so that we can actually read that file. So as the Pi user, we can cat dev TTYS0, and you'll see we'll get some information out there instead of an error. So that is basically what you need to do is add yourself to the group so you can read from that and make sure that the interface is enabled so you see that on there. Different Raspberry Pis will have different uh, names for this, for the serial um, interface. So this might be slightly different for, for you. So make sure to go ahead and change that accordingly. But we can now run our airquality.rb file. And if everything goes well, we should see that we're getting readings for this. So here I have two micrograms per meter cubed, three, and so on. It is uh, reading this every second. That's our baud rate of 9,600. And I happen to have a candle with me that we're going to light. And we are going to then see, we'll blow out the uh, candle next to this air quality reader. And we'll see the value of this go up when it is blown out. And there's a bunch of smoke in the air. So got my candle lit, and we'll blow this out next to the device. You should see these readings climb really fast. So let's scroll down. There we go, we're at hazardous territory all of a sudden because of that smoke putting out lots and lots of micrograms um, in the air of these tiny, tiny particles. 
So here, if we scroll up, you'll see it was good. And then I lit it and blew it out and it just started climbing really quickly up to about, oh, 2300 or so. And then when I blew it out and the air kind of blew it away and I put the lid back on the candle, we have dropped down from hazardous to very unhealthy to unhealthy to unhealthy for sensitive individuals, moderate, and we're back to good. So a little bit of smoke um, was easily really fast detected inside of that uh, PMS 5003 sensor. So this is just a fun little project. Um, what we can do going forward in a follow-up video is actually take these values, send them over MQTT to um, basically log these values and we can graph them over time. We can display them in a Rails app. So we'll do that stuff in a future episode. But this one was a fun one that I wanted to show you just how to wire up one of these to Raspberry Pi. Now I recommend these versions because if you get one from Adafruit or similar, you'll get this little um, breakout board, which is super nice. This breadboard adapter actually takes the little teeny tiny pins and allows you to plug them into a breadboard and you can jump wires over to them very easily. Instead of having to cut it and solder to the pins on your Raspberry Pi or anything like that, it is really easy to wire these up. You can also do this with an Arduino, um, but it's easier to program those with like CircuitPython instead of Ruby. Um, but I'm sure that you can probably do the same thing with uh, maybe embedded Ruby or something like that. But the Raspberry Pi, you just SSH in after you install the Raspberry Pi OS. It's based on Debian, so you can install Ruby using um, Ruby build, uh, ASDF, you know, the typical tools and you're good to go. So that is it for this first episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more stuff like this, let me know in the comments below, and I will talk to you then. Peace.